Hello fellow crafters and welcome back to Max DM Crafting. This is a piece uh, really very inspired by Mortal Engines that actually was a total flop at Blockbuster but uh, with a lot of interesting uh, graphics and ideas. This is a great project and uh, actually it's uh, all about uh, instinct without uh, too many plans. Before start remember to support this channel through Patreon or PayPal. Also check the links in the description box below. Those are Amazon affiliate links if you buy through those links. Nothing changes for you guys, just a little help for this channel. But now sit down, relax and uh, enjoy this uh, amazing journey building the moving castle. Crack on! First of all, I started with the, you know, four tracks. I like the way they work on my, you know, badass tank and also on my scavenger, snail of the goblins. I was trying to give them a direction, so I managed to cut them in this uh, shape. You can see here the measurements. They are three inches long on the top and a few less on the bottom. I love to work with medium graphics cheap board. It's a very, very, very crafty material. It's uh, easy to craft, easy to cut, very sturdy. And this is very funny guys, I was trying to understand uh, which part is the front, which part is the back, but at the end you will see I totally uh, messed up with this and uh, basically I put them on the opposite side, but okay. I'm using now the chipboard as a guide with the procs on a low temperature, I'm cutting them. I'm just putting the four tracks on a big junk of rectangular form, as you can see. And I'm continuing to add details because this will be actually the sci-fi part of the castle. This will be like a moving platform that will sustain the castle. So four tracks full of details, as you can see here. I'm using now strips of uh, five millimeter like that for give uh, depth to the four tracks. Just cutting in place and uh, yeah, that's it. Quite, quite easy, nice and easy. And this is, uh, you know, the revelation crafting material of this year. It was a rubber carpet that I bought for few euros at the dollar store. And uh, since it ve it's very difficult to glue with the hot glue, I'm using uh, some uh, nails to keep it fixed. These are... Uh, bunch of uh, pieces that I have from a uh, dollar store. At the end I'm uh, preparing a grid, one inch grid on the top of it because uh, this helps me a lot to have the idea of the dimension that I want to keep for the miniatures and stuff like that. Another uh, winner of this year for the crafting material are those uh, filter for aquarium. You can have uh, a lot of pieces, I think 10, 12 pieces for a bunch of euros or dollars. They are quite cheap, not very cheap, but quite cheap. And you can uh, use them in a, a lot of ways. Now I want to add a big engine with a lot of pipes and stuff like that for the steam. I was just trying different combination here. I wanted to create an engine room, at the same time I wanted to have it for uh, I love very much the pipes and steampunk stuff.
preparing the floor here with a hole in the center just measured by eye and uh, yes this will be a wooden floor this create a great contrast with the steam punk uh, and with the you know sci-fi part so in this project you will have uh, wood bricks but also metal and plastic and stuff like that i like that this project will be full of contrasts nice and easy those uh, gray plastic parts are from the mantic terrain crates industrial accessories so they are engines pipes this is a sci-fi door put it in a in a brick wall so again contrasts wooden beams and I'm building the room just uh, you know around the engine so it's just uh, eye measuring and go on go on and just craft when you work like that very often you think that uh, you, you are doing weird stuff and maybe you don't have the final project in mind but trust me is the best way to have fun in this way you have a lot of fun you just go go on and craft and you are just uh, problem solving uh, step by step For the two side walls I'm uh, using this uh, plastic net because I wanted that from outside you can see the engine inside. This part is very funny. Uh, this is a clock tower, but actually without a clock. So it's just a tower. And I'm using, uh, you know, a series of pieces pre-cutted. And the process of build this was uh, basically very, very fast. I built this tower, I think in uh, 25 minutes, something like that. As you can see, I'm just putting together the pieces on the, you know, baking paper. That is fantastic for the hot glue because the hot glue will not stick on it putting the four columns together, the four walls, the four windows. Those are windows by Green Stuff World, if I remember correctly. The door that you can see is a clone that I made myself from uh, the old uh, fortress by Warhammer Fantasy.
What you are seeing is my umpteenth project without too many plans, just instinct and imagination. I wanted to take advantage of these pieces of cardboard that I recovered from IKEA packaging, so I imagined the shape of a couple of houses using the cardboard as a skeleton for the buildings. With crafting cardboard, I covered the sides of the lighter structure in order to have a smooth support surface. Once the general shape was built, I started cutting out all the wooden beams, starting with the four corners. At this point, I started covering the walls with details, cutting the boards to sides and inserting pieces of foam with my favorite texture, the one that looks like stucco. At this point I have inserted more support beams, or at least the ends. For everything else the foam proves to be really great, it's really easy to remove pieces here and there and insert details. Since I want to keep these buildings modular, I decided to give them a nice base. Here you can see how I make a wooden floor in a few steps.
With wall filler I fixed the most evident gaps, then cleaning the textures with a metal brush. Now I use spruce to add uh, an electronic touch to the walls. I'm using here some pieces from the Mantic Terrain Crate to add details. Everything you see being yellow or white, yellowish, has been cloned from the original pieces. Here you can see how I get other details and uh, even the resin roof starting from a mold of my own creation. I fold the resin before it's completely dry and we're on the roof. Now, let's start giving a steampunk touch with some big pipes. These are always from the Mantic Industrial Accessory series. Every little accessory becomes an important detail for the final outfit. I add graphics chipboard to simulate steel plates and using cheap jewelry I simulate rivets. The second house has the advantage of having multi-layer cardboard as a support, which is an advantage in terms of weight and resistance.
here you can see what it uh, looks like in the end after I added uh, a lot of details. The T-shape of the roof forced me to build part of the shingles out of foam. The difficult thing was to build the missing parts and not point out the difference with the already resin casted parts. This whole project relied heavily on my instincts. Each session worked like this. I took a part of the castle and tried to customize it until I was satisfied. Here you can see how I used the old oversized wheels to create an external drive belt. Not necessary, but uh, certainly attractive from an aesthetic point of view and great help in balancing the rear weight of the castle. Time to cover the piece, first with the usual mix of uh, black acrylic paint, mod podge and water, then with black primer, sprayed with the airbrush. I am your father. <sighs> Safety first guys, so I'm wearing this mask because uh, you know, the airbrush dust can be very dangerous for your lungs. This is one of my favorite parts where everything starts showing itself for what it would be. I'm not here to bore you with all the painting process guys, I prefer to give you a lot of pictures at the end. This is interesting though, I used two wooden sticks and glued small washers to the base. As you can see, I then fixed some strings, creating two identical tie rods. These were attached to the ends of my castle deck, to help the common tower support the great weight of the front, or bow of the castle, and it worked great. As you can see, I also started painting the large main engine. In the engine room there is a space for a small tea light, for a LED effect that seems to be yeah, very fashion uh, in these days. 
The pieces of the castle are completely modular. They can be used separately to create steampunk settings or dwarven stuff for the more classic ones. Now get ready, I present you my moving castle. The beauty of this piece is that it is certainly a majestic machine, testimony of a very advanced engineering, but there is more, a square, houses, a helm station, a bell tower, pipes, roofs, raised and dangerous passages. It is a play space with infinite possibilities. Great! Ok guys, this is it for today, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe this channel. Remember to support this channel through Patreon or Paypal. And uh, yes, I think I see you all on the next episode. Till next time, happy crafting!